which university to study your master's in robotics from. Hey everyone, my name is Kajal and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to talk about how to go about choosing your university for doing a master's in robotics engineering. In this video, I'll talk about what factors to consider when making this decision and then you can choose which factors matters the most to you while making your decision. I'll also include some examples based on my experience and I'll also include the timings here or in the description below. So without further ado, let's get into it. When it comes to doing your master's in robotics engineering from a university in the US, the first factor that matters is location. When looking for candidates, companies are more likely to go for candidates that are local. This is also true for career fair. Most companies will attend career fair local or close by to their physical location. One other thing to keep in mind is internship can go on to a co-op and companies are keeping that in the back of their mind. Now let me talk a little bit about what is co-op. Internship is something you do during the sum of 40 hours a week or more. But when it comes to co-op, you're doing 20 hours a week while you're studying. So it's studying and working during your semester, which is called co-op. For this reasons, companies may have preference for local candidates who can still continue their internship into co-op. The other thing to keep in mind is if you're on F1 visa, you can only do co-op within 100 miles of your location. This is not true for your summer internship. During your summer internship, you can go anywhere across US, but when it comes to co-op, it has to be physically located within 100 miles of your university. When it comes to locations for robotics job, most robotics companies are in San Francisco slash Bay Area. Other popular areas for robotics is Boston, Pittsburgh, and even Austin is an upcoming area. One thing you can do is you can Google a particular location and look at the number of job offerings for that location to get an idea of how many robotics companies exist in that area. Another way to find out about companies and your university's relationship with them is looking at career fairs. I will say Google career fair for your university for the previous year and see how many robotic companies came or companies similar to your interest to get an idea of what opportunities lie for you when you choose a particular university for your masters. That being said, you'll still find robotics internship and full-time jobs outside your university's location. So don't worry too much about it. The second factor is courses. When you're choosing your university, Look at the courses that are being offered for robotics engineering and see if that is something that you are interested in. Not all universities follow the same syllabus. Each university sets their own courses based on professors. It will be a combination of compulsory courses and elective options. So make sure to go to the website and see what type of courses are offered. While looking at courses, also keep your end goal in mind. Are you someone who's looking to do a job after your master's in robotics or are you someone who wants to do a PhD in robotics? If your plan is to go for a robotics job after your master's, I would recommend look for courses that have projects and access to real robots in labs that you can work with. This will make a great impact on your resume and give you good experience when you're looking for jobs. For example, UCLA gives you access to Maker Lab. In an interview on my channel, Rishav talks about his experience of doing masters and access to Maker Lab at UCLA. I'll link it as a card and also include it in the description. The other thing to keep in mind is batch size. So when it comes to courses, you're not guaranteed a spot in a course. Courses have a restriction on number of students who are allowed to take that course. So at the start of the semester, you have to log in and register for the courses that you're interested in. They open the courses at the same time for everyone and you have to be able to get a spot in the course you're interested in. So it is entirely possible that there is a course that you're interested in, but there are limited number of seats and the batch size is too large. You might not be able to get a seat into that course. So that is also something to keep in mind. Next, let's talk about cost. When it comes to cost, there is tuition fee, which is the fees for college when doing your master's plus living expenses. In general, Public universities are a bit cheaper than private universities. And I do want to mention this, that public universities doesn't mean that the education level is lower or different than the private universities. This personally for me was one of the reasons I went for University of Maryland. When it comes to cost, there are also other ways to reduce your cost. 
Now, if you're an international student, you may not qualify for scholarship because most scholarship require that you're a US citizen. But there is another way, assistantship. Generally, compared to part-time position, when it comes to assistantship, you get a tuition fee waiver along with a stipend, which will help you manage your living expenses. Now, this is something I didn't actually know before starting my master's. It was only after I came to the US that I found out about graduate assistantship. I got one at my university, and that is how I was able to graduate debt free. So when you're looking at universities, do look if there is opportunity for assistantship. And when I mean opportunity for assistantship, there are universities where assistantships are only reserved for PhD students and master students are not eligible. So make sure you check if it is something that is also available to you as a master student. Within assistantship, you have graduate assistantship, teaching assistantship, and research assistantship. Let's talk about research assistantship. This is where you will work with a professor in their lab. This is a great way to get some experience. Now, this is also where your interest comes into picture. For example, let's say within the field of robotics, you're very interested in drones, or maybe you're interested in medical robots. So when you're looking at universities, look at professors and the research that they're currently working on. If that is something of interest to you, you can consider that when choosing your universities. I would also recommend reach out to those professors and see if you can work with them. Working with a professor is a great way to get some experience and also develop your interest within a particular field. Now, these are a lot of factors to consider and information may be limited online. Here's how I suggest you go about it. One, reach out to your seniors, ask them about this information. And second, reach out to the representatives of the university or specifically the department that is offering your masters. Reach out to them and ask all of these questions to be able to help you make a decision. The other thing I wanna talk about is mindset. This is a good way to develop your mindset when it comes to studying and working in the US. When you come to the US for your masters in robotics engineering, you're kind of on your own. When it comes to looking for internship, part-time jobs, full-time jobs, working with visa, you'll mostly be on your own. There isn't a dedicated placement self that will help you land a job. So it's important that you start doing these things on your own. When you're researching all of these factors to make your decision about your masters, you're also developing the skills on how to go about doing all of this on your own. Now I know you may have a lot more questions, which is why I'm deciding to do a live Q&A on the topic of how to go about choosing a university for your master's in robotics. I'll include the link in the description below. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.